Hello, my name is Alex Kemeny and I work at Trump's Bridge Centre for Derek Brown down there. I work for him running supervised sessions and also normal duplicate sessions. I found that often people, particularly in the supervised sessions, don't understand very well how Bridge is scored, so I thought it would be useful to make this YouTube video in order to explain that. Now, duplicate bridge, as we play in a club, is scored in units, so that each hand can be scored separately. However, bridge scoring is based upon rubber bridge scoring. Rubber bridge evolved in the early part of the 20th century. So it's really by only understanding how rubber bridge scoring works that you can then further understand how scoring for duplicate or match point of pairs works. So I thought in this first video that I would concentrate solely on explaining how rubber bridge scoring works. So I'll do that now and if you want to go and look at the second video later that talks about uh, club scoring for duplicate bridge, please do that as well. So up here I have shown what a duplicate bridge uh, score pad looks like. I remember these from when I was a kid and used to watch my parents play bridge on a Saturday night with their friends. The pad is just laid out very simply to we and they, we being us, they being the opponents. And there is a concept of scores above the line and below the line. So the ultimate object in bridge is to score 100 points on any one deal, if you can. And if you do that, it's called making a game. I think most bridge players would be aware of that. And we should also be aware, I think, that the basic scoring in bridge is that if you make a contract in hearts or spades, you score 30 points for each trick that you make. Uh, when I say trick, I mean tricks in, in excess of six. So for instance, a contract of two spades, we're trying to make eight tricks. If we do make our contract of two spades, we'll score 60, because spades and hearts score 30 each. So I'll put that up here. Spades and hearts are worth 30. For each trick, clubs and diamonds are worth 20. So if we want to make a game in clubs or a game in diamonds, we have to bid to five clubs or five diamonds in order to score 100 points. I think most of us are aware that if we want to make a game in a major, we have to bid to four spades or four hearts because four times 30 will give you 120. The contract of three no trumps is also worth 100 points. That's because in no trumps, the first no trump is valued at 40 points. And then 30 for each subsequent no trump that you make. So in no trumps, if we make one no trump, it's worth 40. Two no trumps will be worth 70. Three no trumps is worth 100. So one no trump, 40. Each subsequent no trump is worth an additional 30 points. I'll just leave that there in the middle as a bit of a reminder. So now let's think about rubber bridge, how we score it. Let's assume that we have, um, maybe we're going to play 10 deals. We've decided with our opponents that we'll play 10 deals and after that we'll see who's winning. Because that's the way rubber bridge is usually played. 10 deals would be a very short session. Usually you'd play something like 24 deals in a session of rubber bridge. Let's assume that on the uh, first board, east-west, we'll, we'll say that we're north-south and east-west are our opponents. East-west bid to two no trumps and they make nine tricks. So they make one over trick. Well, they bid to two no trumps, so they score 70 for bidding and making two no trumps. So scores for made contracts go below the line. I'll explain about the concept of below the line in a moment. Our idea is to score two games, which is scored below the line. So if we score, if we on that first board have east-west, our opponents, making three no trumps, when they bid to two no trumps, it would be scored like this. For bidding and making two no trumps, they score 70 below the line. They also scored another 30 for making the over trick, and that's scored above the line. 
So their score there is 70 below the line and 30 above the line. Now if they had bid for three no trumps and also made nine tricks, the whole hundred would have been scored below the line and that would have been a game. So what's happened here is they failed to bid a contract that could have been a game. Nevertheless, you score 30, 70 points and in rubber bridge it means that you only need another 30 points to score your game. So if East West are now to score, let's say, one spade on the next deal, they'll score another 30 here and that'll be a game because they will have scored 100 points. So in rubber bridge we've got the concept of being able to build up your 100 point game score across multiple hands. Anyway, let's assume that on the next hand, North-South bid to, let's say, four hearts or four spades, and they make that contract. They make ten tricks. So North-South, spades and hearts are worth 30 each. They've bid and made four hearts, let's say. They score 120, all below the line. And a line is now ruled there to indicate that us, we'll say we're north-south, have scored a game. It also means that this 70 points that the opponents had towards their first game is now gone. We will add up those points at the end, but in terms of them getting towards their first game, a line has been ruled under our score. So that 70 points that they got before is gone. We are now leading one game to nil in the rubber. I should have also mentioned that a rubber in rubber bridge consists of making two games. So we've got one game towards rubber. Let's see what happens on the third deal. On the third deal, East-West, our opponents, bid to a contract and they went one off. It doesn't really matter what the contract was. Maybe it was six hearts going one off. Maybe it was three clubs going one off. I think we're all um, familiar with the concept of vulnerability, which I should have mentioned. After we've scored a game, we are what's called vulnerable. They have not yet scored a game, so they are not vulnerable. So on the third deal, they've gone one off. Those of you who know what one off is worth, when you are not vulnerable, it means you give 50 points away. Now, we don't get that 50 points below the line because below the line scores are only for making contracts. So, third board, our opponents have gone one off in some contract, so they give us 50 points. One off, not vulnerable, gives away 50 points. Okay, now on the next board, we bid to some contract. Let's say we bid to maybe six hearts even. And we went two off. But again, it could be any contract, two off. So we bid... We've now bid to a contract, maybe we were stretching very hard to try to make a game, maybe we were in four spades perhaps. In any case, we went two off. We're vulnerable. When you go off and you are vulnerable, we already have a game in, remember, towards the rubber. It costs you 100 points for each trick you go off. We've just gone two off. So we now give away 200 points, again, above the line to our opponents. So they now score 200 above the line. Okay. On the fifth board, our opponents bid to three no trumps and they made it. They made nine tricks. As I told you earlier, one no trumps worth 40, two no trumps 70, three no trumps is 100. So they now score below the line 100 points. So they have scored their game in one go. So now, we are vulnerable, and they are vulnerable. Notice also that way back on that first hand, if they bid to three no trumps, their 100 points would have all been down here. They would now have two games and would win the rubber. But they didn't do that. They only got a part score in, and we then cancelled their part score out by making our game. Now they've made a game. So, on the next board, we bid and made two spades. That's our side. In fact, let's say that we bid two spades and we made three spades, because it just shows the concept a little better. So, we've bid two spades. We've bid 
two spades we made nine tricks. For bidding and making two spades we get 60 and we get the extra 30 above the line for making the over trick. We do not get 90 below the line because we did not bid to three spades. We bid to two spades, made nine tricks, so the other 30 goes above the line. Now on the next board, again, we got the cards, we were quite lucky, and this time we bid to, let's say, three clubs. So this time we got it, we, we bid, we bid all the way up to three clubs. Let's say we made ten tricks in three clubs. So we scored, for bidding and making three clubs, we scored 60 below the line. I said that we made an over trick, so the other 20 will go above the line. Notice here we have now completed another game because we have scored 100 points. It took us two deals to do it, but we did it without our score getting removed by the opponents making a game. So at this point we've won the rubber. We've won the rubber by two games to one. So you can win the rubber by two games to nil or by two games to one. So we have won this rubber by two games to one. For winning the rubber, and this is where the big points come in in bridge, we get a bonus of 500 points. So we can add another 500 points above the line and we're now ready to score up this rubber. We've scored a total of 520, 50, 600, 720, and another 120. We've scored a total of 840 points. The opponents have scored 200, 230, 300, 400 points. We've won that rubber by 440 points. So we're We've won that rubber by 440 points. Let's say we can agree to continue playing with our opponents. We will now write the 440 points here as a carry forward to our second rubber. So now let's play a second rubber. Okay, let's think about what might have happened on the very next hand. Let's assume that uh, what has happened here is on the very first board we have bid to a certain contract and the opponents have doubled us and we have gone two off. We've bid to a contract, gone two off. Normally we would give away a hundred points for going two off. But when you are doubled the penalties are greater. So when you are doubled it doesn't cost you 50 points for each under trick. It costs you a hundred points for the first under trick and 200 points for the next under trick. So because we've made two under tricks, meaning we've gone off, we've gone two off and we were doubled, we give the opponents 300 points. So two off, not vulnerable, doubled is 300 points. By the way, when you're in a bridge club and you turn over the table number on your table, all the scoring is explained on that underside of the table number. So if the contract was four spades, doubled, not vulnerable, going two off, you'd be able to look up that it was 300 points. So it does get expensive when you get doubled and you go off. So let's assume that on the next board our opponents bid and made, let's say, six hearts. So they've made six hearts, six times 30 is 180 below the line and they've scored a game. Now also because they have scored a small slam not vulnerable they get an extra 500 points. So small slams and big and grand slams making score a lot of additional points. 500 is the bonus for making a non-vulnerable small slam 750 is a bonus for making a vulnerable small slam and if you bid to grand slam that is making all the tricks bidding to the seven level and you make your contract if you're not vulnerable you get a thousand point bonus above the line and if you are vulnerable and you make a grand slam you get a 1500 point bonus above the line and that's a lot so this is why slams are very important when you're playing rubber bridge or teams bridge because the bonuses are really very large 
So you can see straight away on that one hand, we've lost all benefit of winning the first rubber. We're now behind in the match. So let's play one last hand. Let's assume that time's running out and our opponents are going to be very keen to try to win it, finish off the rubber because then they will win the rubber and get a significant extra bonus as well. But in fact, on the last hand, what happens is that we bid to two no trumps, let's say, and we make two no trumps. So we will score 70 points below the line. So we now have 70 points in to winning our first game. And the scoring would continue as I've explained. Let's assume that's the last hand. We don't have time for any more. So how do we score up at this point an unfinished rubber? Well, we have a part score in. When you have a part score and you decide to finish play, you get an extra 50 points as a little... Uh, bonus for um, uh, the fact that you've progressed somewhere towards your towards making your first game. And I've just realized, um, oh no, that's okay. I thought I was getting something wrong, but no, let's keep going. So 50 points we get as, uh, 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 as uh, some uh, recompense that we're, we could, we could convert this into a game. Remember, we're finishing play at this point. Our opponents, however, have already scored a game. So because they are only, in theory, one deal away from winning the rubber, well, not in theory, they actually could win the rubber on the next deal, they get, for an unfinished rubber, if you have a, a game in, you get a bonus of 300 points for uh, not, uh, not finishing the rubber when you have a, a game in. So now if you add up all the points, we've scored 440 for the first rubber, 50 here and 70 there gives us a total of 560 points for us and if you add up all the points that they have scored they've scored 300 500 and 300 that's 1100 and 180 they've scored 1280 if you take the difference between these two you'll see that they have won by 720 points so although they lost the first rubber the fact that they bit a slam in the second rubber and they already were vulnerable in the second rubber means they've won this little session of bridge by 720 points. So if we were playing for, uh, let's say, uh, uh, what's called a dollar a point, which really means a dollar for 100 points, it's not a dollar a point. When you say you rubber bridge, you play for a dollar a point, you mean a dollar for 100 points, we would have to pay them $7.20 because we lost by 720 points. So if you like, it's, uh, it kind of works out like a cent for a real point. So that's just if you're playing rubber bridge for money, which, which people used to often do. So I hope that explains, and I know that was fairly quick, but I didn't want to be too slow about this. You can go back and, and review the, the uh, talk again, obviously. It explains the concept of rubber bridge. So the important things are the concept of being vulnerable and being not vulnerable which is when you have one game towards the rubber, you are vulnerable. And the other concept is that doubling costs can cost a, a lot if you get doubled and go off, as we did here. Also, if you make a slam, you get an extra bonus. So you get a bonus for a game, because you start to progress towards winning your rubber, and you get an additional bonus for bidding to slam, which is why bidding to the six and seven levels is particularly good. All right, well, I think that will do for this session. So thanks for watching. And if you're interested, please watch the next video where I'll attempt to discuss how this scoring is used in duplicate rubber bridge, a duplicate scoring in clubs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the whole idea in clubs is to try to convert each uh, hand into a scorable unit. And you'll notice when I talk about that, that the 50 points for making a part score and the 300 points for making a uh, for having one game towards a rubber become important in the bonuses we talk about in that form of scoring. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and uh, if you're interested, please watch part two. Thanks. Bye.